Well, hello, finders today. Do you remember just a few months ago, I looked at the Vifly finder and already they've come up with this, the very imaginatively named Vifly Finder 2. What's different about it? Well, um, not that much, but a couple of key things. It almost looks the same. If you look very closely, you'll see there's a few more little bits on it, one of which is uh, a sensor and an LED. So this will work exactly the same as before. You plug it in to Betaflight, it will act as an ore beeper. Once you lose power from the main battery, this little LiPo, which will charge up when you connect it, will start to beep. Um, and one thing about the Vifly Finder, it was very, very loud, which is a good thing. The difference the Vifly Finder 2 has it's got a little sensor to decide how dark it is. Now what they've decided is when it gets dark, it's gonna pulse an LED, if I understand that correctly, but when it's dark, it won't make the sound. And they've said, protect your neighbors, so it doesn't beep when it's dark. They've, they've basically gone with the idea that when it's dark, no one's gonna be around looking for their quad. Um, it kind of depends on how much you spent in your quad and how much precious it was to you. Yeah, it's not as great searching in the dark, but if you've got something which has a flashy light and could show up nicely, that, that could be something that could be quite useful. It's going to be an interesting one to test as well. But um, yeah, well, let's get this hooked up and we'll find out exactly how it does work. Let's do that first. Okay, so what I've done, I've gone and followed the instructions here about connecting to the flight controller using buzz plus, buzz minus and ground, which I've done on this quad. And so I can just show it to you. I've basically put it on a, a longer piece of cable than I would. I kind of like these ones because they've got an attachment here. So it's easy to unplug and plug, but this is quite a useful way of being able to show it and uh, the LED as well. So let's power this on. So you notice he's got a little LED indicator on the side there. When that's red, it means it's being charged. And when it's fully charged, basically it goes out. There is this LED light at the front there, which goes off when it actually alarms. Um, but the rest of it's pretty normal. So you've got your control and I've, I've got mine here. So if I put it in beeper mode, it starts going mental and that's, you know, normal, just changing modes and stuff like that. So acts as your normal beeper and then basically goes off uh, when it loses power or you set the alarm. So if I was to do this, it will start doing its little, what it's doing here is a low noise for 30 seconds and we can disarm that by plugging in and then taking the power off for about three to six seconds. And that beep, beep, beep indicates it's disarmed and you can also do it through this button here. But let's uh, go ahead and actually just shove this back in slightly. So I'd probably have it installed here. So what I'm gonna do is actually test how loud the beeper is. And now we've got about 30 seconds to uh... So that's peaking at about 94, depending how far it is away. You should also see there's no LED flashing there, but if we bring the lights down, we get quite a bright flash there. And if we tuck that in, how's that look? Hello, welcome to the conservatory where it's just gone 10 o'clock and I'm here with the quad with the little Vifly finder in it and a battery because I want to see what happens if we stick it out here in the darkness. Now, although it doesn't show up brilliantly in the viewfinder of the GoPro, it's not completely dark there because we've got the street light just up there. Um, so it's not completely dark, but out there in the corner it is. So um, yeah, I'm going to try and plug this in turn these lights off, uh, take it out there for 30 seconds and see what happens. So let's do that now. Okay, <laughs> the little lights you see, uh, the quad itself. So I'm gonna go over to this very dark corner. I'm gonna unplug. There is a beep at the moment, 
But we can't see much else coming from that corner. Well, good news, I can see the light. Bad news is, I can still hear it. So the other way the Vifly 2 works, which is different from number one, is you can plug it in to a normal receiver via a PWM channel. And this is gonna be more in the line of people flying fixed wing as, as an, a, a beeper. So I've got this set on a switch so I can set it off. It actually got two tones I found out. I've got like halfway. Makes that awful noise and all the way along. Makes that noise. And uh, I, you can, what I notice is doing a no pulses foul safe doesn't do anything, but I can obviously use the receiver foul safe. So if I then turn off. So there's a lot of light in here, but if it's in the darkness. And of course, should you lose power, which is less likely on a fixed wing, then It works exactly the same as before. You've got 30 seconds of it beeping away. It's done with the button. So we didn't go out in the field and do a sort of simulation of losing the accordion and finding it. If you want to see what that looks like, it, the, the Vifinder 2 is going to look exactly the same as the Vifinder 1. Here's a handy link to the Finder version 1 review where you can see us doing that. So a couple of things to mention about this. Now, first off, when I was putting it in the dark, I wasn't expecting the alarm to go off. So I double checked this with Vifinder to see exactly how this will work. And it works on changing light, which I think is quite important because as they mentioned, and I'm sure you guys would as well, that if you're finder was buried inside your quad where it's dark or it landed upside down in trees and stuff and it was dark or in shade there it might detect darkness and, and not go off and just flash the light which wouldn't be very useful so no matter what happens it will start beeping for at least the first two hours what the sensor does then is is look to see if that initial light is dropping and if it if that light has dropped off and it's sort of it started light and it then goes dark after that initial two hours, it will go quiet and just flash the light. I, I really don't know how relevant it is about the fact that the sound goes off because uh, you shouldn't really be flying in urban environments, so it's not exactly sort of disturbing people. I think I would still be out looking for my quad even if it got dark because I don't want to lose them, but that's just me. So the other thing to mention is about the fixed wing idea. So kind of in the past, I've always thought that with planes like, I mean, there's the Bixler 2 behind me. Um, that's a big plane and it's quite hard to lose and with APs in it I generally have a GPS position to go and recover it from. That's all true but they actually, all you need is some bushes or grass and stuff and they become quite difficult to find so it's actually really quite useful having some sort of people like that. And when you look at the sort of planes we might be flying now, uh, the sort of smaller wing is more on vogue and this will disappear completely in just some long grass so it's quite useful to have something that will beep and of course you don't have to connect it directly to a receiver because sometimes it's the case that you'll be going S bus from your receiver into flight controller as long as you've got some sort of PWM output on your flight controller you can then control this with a switch and set it off that way yes so lots to like here isn't there um, some good improvements on last time it's really loud the flashing light is you know more ways of attracting attention can only be a good thing and the price is pretty good, so yeah, check it out. This is of course the Vifly Finder version 2, and you can find it on the links down below. And I hope that's been helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing, and if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.